pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So today, Chef Grant and I are going to go over one of the coolest trends that's out there, German immersion. And what a better trend to start out with here in the Midwest, here with beer, here with warmth, than doing a little bangers and mash, a little bit of Wisconsin, Illinois style, depending on where you're from. And as always, go Bears. Uh, Maybe I'll go bears. <laughs> so, Chef, tell me about, so, Chef, tell me about how we're using those berries and we're incorporating them in some of the recipes that you guys do at the Milwaukee Ale House and Brewing Company. Um, I've always considered beer as a more versatile ingredient than wine. Um, so, working with the brewing company makes my job a lot easier because we have so many different flavors of beers. And we have tea beers, we have pumpkin sweet potato beers, we have all kinds of good stuff at the brewing company. So, before we get started with this cool recipe, tell us a little bit about this beer right here, this Sasquatch. I was fascinated about it. You started going all these details about this beer, so tell okay. us a little bit about it. Uh, it's actually a pumpkin porter, but we would like to call it a sweet potato porter because we actually use a thousand pounds of sweet potatoes, 300 pounds of pumpkin. So it's a lot more sweet potato, and we also roast those on a grill outside in front of the brewery on 2nd Street, Milwaukee. So if you ever want to come by in uh, October ish, September, we're always just this, the aromas at the brewery is just, oh, it's really good, really good. One of the coolest things I saw with that tour, I love the huge fan in the brewery. Yes, I thought it was yes, just yeah. the craziest thing. I've never yeah. seen such a big ceiling fan in my whole life. Never, never really, stops. Never it stops. It going. never stops. So it's a cool partnership that we're, we're providing all the ginger, sweet potatoes, the Monarch brand sugar, and actually doing the sweet potato pumpkin nope. pack as well. So when we get started with this recipe, part of this recipe that I was fascinated by when we were talking is, you see people do a broth boil all the time. It kind of pulls all the fats out of it. So yeah. what we're actually going to do today, like what you were teaching me, is we're actually going to do these posts at a little bit lower temperature, which I thought was really, really fascinating. And today we're going to be using the Pat Lafreda broth with that little bit of mace and pink flavor in there. Got a nice coarse grind on it. One of my favorites, absolutely. Yep. So walk me through how we're going to, we're going to poach these a little bit. Through a little bit of the magic of TV, we've already got some poached in no big deal. So we're not going to wait for that because the really, the, the really exciting part about this recipe is always the sauce. So uh, what, do we, what do we got in the sauce? The sauce, today? we actually have a uh, black pepper crust and bacon, so we're going to render that real slow. Okay, when that's all good, take Beautiful. magic. Okay. Quickly. And then we're quickly going to add rendering. a little fresh diced onion, okay? We're going to saute that, caramelize it a little bit. So, oh. yeah, we're going to give it a little bit okay. heat there. So tell me about some of the recipes that you guys do at the restaurant, incorporating some of those really crazy beers in there, really bringing that sort of German and kind of English flair as you guys going to do at the restaurant. Well, since we're in Illinois, i got to bring up the Italian beef. We make a really good Italian beef. Uh, we use our it's a whole statement. Yes, it's a whole statement. Right. We're here, we're here. We make our own jar in the Aaron house. Uh, we use our Hot Freak beer, which is a double IPA. We make the au jus out of that for the Italian beef. So we can do, you know, we can do your dip, all that, a little cheese on there, because it's Wisconsin, we've got to have Swiss cheese. Um, and there's many other ways, uh, ways that we use uh, beer in our, uh, in our food at the Ale House. Um, we're all fresh, all fresh ingredients, um, made in house. So. Well, you kind of have to be, with you guys being down on the third board, which is absolutely the trendsetter area yes, of Milwaukee, yes. I think you were telling me about some of the cool festivals that you guys do with Oktoberfest coming up. That's got to be a really cool time of year that you guys are approaching. Vegetables. No, oh, Oktoberfest. Right? Oktoberfest. In the third ward. Yep. <laughs> uh, there is, there's a lot of festivals going on at uh, one of the parks that's right up around the street there. Um, yeah. A lot of cool stuff. Well, very cool. So one of the things that I really, the chef and I work together on doing some new products is that we've all had to make some mashed potatoes from scratch. We're carrying around those 60 pound buckets of boiling water, which has just safety planted all over the top of it, of course. So one of the products that we've been working on together is we're doing this new rooster potato and doing a baked mashed potato. So we're baking this potato's little olive oil, salt, and pepper in the, in the oven, just like you would with any other baked potato. And then we're making a mashed potato straight out of it. Keeps all the great flavors, has a, has a nice roast and a peel to it. Really, really exciting. Yeah. So it's something that we were really having fun with. So now that I've got these onions sauteed a little bit, hold on, wait for it. I tried to twist the top of this beer off earlier today. Uh -oh. That did not go well. Uh -oh. So we're gonna pop the top of this beer off. We're gonna hit it, do a little deglaze. Just to add that nice porter flavor to it. Love the sizzle. So now again, what we're talking about doing it from scratch. I think that's one of the most important things. And so I know that what you're really busy with at the, at the Ale House is making sure that you're being competitive in the market with some of our QSR restaurants, the yep. quick service restaurants, but also trying to put some scratch things together. So yep. when you and I are working on this methodology and how we were going to do this, I was really excited about the fact that you actually wanted to use bechamel, one of the classic mother sauces. Yeah, it's one of the five mother sauces. Um, it, it, and, and it's versatile because you can add how much you want. If you want it more creamy, less creamy, it doesn't matter. And then you can add your cheese. It'll, it'll incorporate it into the, it won't separate on you. So that's what the bechamel does. Um, Could you make soups with this too? You can make anything you want with bechamel. Anything. Anything you want. <laughs> anything except marinara sauce, right? Rosé. 
rosé. We could make a little bit of rosé. Absolutely. So we got this beautiful sauce started. Very, very cool. We've also got this little quenelle over here that we've been doing with it, which I'm excited about. So when we're doing these brats, the nice thing about it with the with them already being poached is we really infuse some of that really cool beer flavor into yep. it. And that's going to really gonna get that Wisconsin twist on it. That's right. Everything. Wisconsin it's beer, gotta have brats, that beer. It's got to have that beer, brats, and sausages. So what are the things that you guys are doing and seeing out in the marketplace as far as trying to incorporate more beer into your into your products? Are you guys doing more yeah. soups, more entrees? You know, what are, what are you trying to do to kind of take advantage of the fact that that's really the hot spot right now? Well, we're rolling into fall season, so we're going to do our fall menu. Um, we're going to we're going to do a little stout lamb shank. I'm going to bring that in. That's going to be fun to do. Um, we're also going to do a bouillat stew. Now, if anybody knows bouillat, we also make that bouillat beer. It's an apricot saison beer at the brewing company, and it's a it's a very very old recipe from the Midwest. It's a big it's a big potluck. Everybody comes in. They throw their beef, their chicken, their pork, their vegetables, and it's just called bouillat. So it's a very very old tradition in Wisconsin. So we're gonna put bouillat stew on the menu this year. And I hope it goes well. Absolutely. Well, and I love that. And I think when we were talking about this recipe at the restaurant, the part that I thought was great about the Milwaukee Ale House is that it's got all the dark woods, and they really try to incorporate the brewery as much as possible. So when you walk in, it's that big punch in the face that hops. You really get the beer smell. Yep. So that's really exciting. Brewery's about. right in front. You know, Dave's always up there doing something. He's always. Yeah. So now we're gonna throw a little cheddar cheese in here as well. Get that kind of fondue thing, and that's the advantage I think you were teaching me about the about the bechamel. So we can kind of warm it up, and instead of having to dump all of our cheese together with our cold cream and have all that cheese separate and get all gritty, is this is a really cool way to not only make some really cool sauces, but make some great soups as well, where we can kind yep. of leave a little texture in there. Yep. So I think we can all agree that when we think about German. In today's world, we don't necessarily think about the sexiest food that might be out there. So what we're going to, Chef and I are going to do today, is we're going to try to do a little cool presentation here. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that I thought was really exciting is that micro chives. Micro chives. Wow. So who here out there has tried some micro chives? One, two. Somebody. Excellent. Somebody right. has. Excellent. Well, I really recommend. We're going to be we're going to be up here with this. And just for, just as a reminder, when Chef and I are done doing this great presentation, right behind you in the interactive kitchen, who hopefully is paying attention, because we're going to be coming for them. There's going to be samples of everything that we're going to try in throughout the day. So as you come, as you come to the stage looking for those, for those really cool and innovative ideas, make sure that after the tastings that you can go right back there and try everything that we just made right away. Right there where Rob is waving at me, which clearly means that Rob is ready for us. So a little heavy cream. What are we doing to the heavy cream with that? Uh, it, it got a little thick on us. We got up here, real busy up here, so cooking gets our way on us. So we're going to add a little cream, thin it out a little bit, make it more saucy. Dance no worries. Up. No worries at all. So I've got these brats here that, boom, look, they're already sautéed. It's amazing. It's like magic. But now, one of the advantages, especially the thing that you and I are talking about, when I'm working with customers in the field and chefs like Grant, is that we're always looking and making sure that, yeah, we can have these crazy cool ideas, and yeah, we can be innovative, but at the end of the day, we have to be able to produce. we got to make these products fast. we got to be able to do them for our customers. Some are coming in for lunch. So what are some of the things that you're doing at the restaurant as far as really, really making sure that we're able to get these products out on time and getting that prep done? Uh, well, we like to make food that's easily cookable at home, something anybody can do. Um, but the challenge for us is to make it fast, um, at a high volume, at a fast pace. Uh, so that's always the challenge for us. So it's always about mise en place. You know, everything's already cut and ready to go for you. Um, yeah, it's always it's always a game trying to figure it out. You know? Has anybody out there in the crowd, has anybody done beer and eat cool recipes as well that kind of were similar to this that you'd like to want to share? Anybody? I know Aaron. Not at once. Nobody? Hold on. Nobody. It's okay. It's okay if you don't. It's okay here. if you don't. No worries at all. So why don't we get this plating started? So I've obviously got the magic of TV brats already done. And you and I were talking about doing this really, really cool, slight offset kind of bias cut on these brats. Get a cool presentation out there. And again, this is about showing a really classic dish. So we think about bangers and mash. We always think about that. That really old school, old world English, English food. Great flavors, but the English are not exactly known. I would know. I'm, my name is Foster Deadman, so my name is completely English. So the only thing that's not English about me is my teeth and my accent. But really, it's about putting those really great flavors together and showing some cool presentations as well. So what Chef is doing here, that's one of the things that we're always working on, is having great play presentation. Even though the food might be awesome, it might be the best tasting food on earth, but we all eat with our eyes. So being able to show that, like Chef is doing here today, is really, really key. Got a nice gravy on there, got some nice colors. And then again, those micro chives, which I absolutely recommend everybody tries. It's got a nice onion flavor, but it's a little bit sweet actually. Yes, yeah, I thought. it is, yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. Mm -hmm. And going a little light over the top, I think, 
Well, be nice when you think chef. It's Absolutely. your dish. I don't want to. I don't oh, want to make. Since sense. we are from Milwaukee, we do love our cheese. We do love so our I'll, cheese. I'll throw more cheese on it too. Oh, I like that. It's a super locale experience. That's right. Everything about that. So again, with this beer, when we were, when we were tasting this, it's such a cool thing. What are some other recipes we might be able to do with this, with beers like this and in general? Uh, let's see. Could you use it for desserts? Because I'm we thinking could, I would sweet make potato a, pumpkin dessert. Sweet potato pumpkin dessert, absolutely. Uh, we could do a little sweet potato puree uh, for a, you know, a lamb shank or anything. Um, so reduction yeah, as well. Are you guys doing tastings yeah. as well? Uh, tastings at the, at the restaurant? No, but we do have wide open tours and tastings all the time at the brewery. And yeah. that's the part that I thought was so cool. If you guys ever have the opportunity at the Milwaukee Brewing Company, they're so open. You can kind of almost literally walk in and ask for, you can literally walk in and ask for a tour. They are bottling all the time. In fact, I just learned, because I asked the brewmaster when we were checking this beer out, because he handed me, handed it, literally was like, here, here you are. It's yeah. a really, really cool experience. Fresh off the line. Fresh, so. fresh yeah, off, off the line. line. What I asked him was, is how they're actually, how you're able to put the beer into the bottles without actually having it just blow all over the place. And I was really surprised that they actually create the same atmosphere, so the more actually, the beer actually pours just as a solution with no effervescence, mm -hmm. which I never knew. I thought it was absolutely fascinating. I've seen all these beers just rip off the line like, yeah. like in the, and it's not getting foamed up or carbonated. Exactly, I was kind of, how does that even yeah. work? So it was really cool that they create that separate atmosphere. Very, very, very. If cool. you're ever there when they're doing the canning process, too, that's really cool because it's just it doesn't have the top; it's just the bottom of the can. And it's that whole thing on here. Really? So, so it's great because we have short fills for employees. So if they don't fill it right, that's a they, tough day. It's a tough day for the short fills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me try this beer. Yeah, really quick. short fills. Yeah. Well, very, very cool. Yeah. Well, so after this, what we have going on is a little bit of uh, a little bit of action. It's called Check Your Package. I can say that because it's literally the name of it on the title on the screen. That's going to be doing Pactive, doing some really new and innovative packing ideas. We've got some truffle chips that we're going to be doing with Chef Matt Dean and the Pactive Chef. Uh, and yeah. after this, after we're done, feel free to ask us any questions that you wish. And right behind you, Interactive Kitchen, are you ready for a little bit of mashed potatoes and brats? Chef Rob says that we're ready. So after we're done with this today, turn around, check it out throughout the entire day, the entire presentation. We have new foods out there. We have food fanatics all across the floor. We have live sushi over here, Scoop Square. Absolutely. This is about being an event. It is not a show. We want to show you everything that is new and exciting about the food service industry. So check it out there, and thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, yeah, one so, other thing. Sorry to interrupt. We also have a, our brewing company is at a table over here, so if you guys want to go try sampling any of the beers. Sorry, we do not have this today, but we have everything else you want. So, yeah, we're actually, and we're, so we're doing tastings in the mixology, so Chef is right. So right over there, we have all the beers for those guys, for you guys to try. Go through them. Kind of wean yourself through the day. We want to make sure you make it through the entire day. We need to load up on the beer yeah. right away. It's not, it's, I mean, it's noon somewhere. Yeah. It's definitely noon somewhere. We've got free beer cards for everybody, too, so come on out. And, and one of the coolest things we've got going on right now is check out the Food Fanatic Awards over here, right over here to the left of the right hand side of the stage. We're doing awesome categories. Vote yourself in, get there and win. Make a big deal out of yourselves because you guys work so hard. So check it out right over here to the right side of the stage. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank <laughs> you.